Okay, good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. So I just wanted to welcome everybody to today's presentation on how electronic forms enable immediate processing of accurate information and promote self-service across campus. My name is Kim Torres, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at ImageSource, and I'm happy to be the host for today's presentation. Just a couple of things before uh, we get started. We're recording the webinar, so all of your lines have been muted. Um, you can ask questions using the chat feature on your screen. And to keep things moving along, we're going to leave the Q&A until the end of the, today's presentation. For those of you who use social media, you can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or on our social sites during the presentation. And um, with that said, I'm happy to kick things off by giving a quick quick introduction to our two expert speakers today, Randy Weekly and Dave McWaters. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, so Randy's going to start our presentation. He is the Vice President of Software Development at ImageSource, and his responsibilities include development and delivery of our iLink software product suite. Before joining our team, Randy held the same position at Oracle for many years for their imaging and capture products. And Dave McWaters is a project manager here at ImageSource, and he is PMP certified with 28 years of experience in the ECM industry. He is our lead expert in higher ed implementations and has managed major enterprise deployments for institutions including San Jose State University, the University of Washington, and UC Davis, just to name a few. And so without further delay, I'm going to hand things over to you, Randy. All right. Thanks, Kim. And thanks, everybody, for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We're going to discuss some of the complexities surrounding the mechanisms by which we collect information from people that are detached and or outside of our back office systems. And this need to collect and process this uh, sometimes complex information is not going away. Now, we've made some great progress towards a paperless office. But we, we often still struggle with extending electronic data collection outside of the organization. So today, uh, we're going to introduce you to some technologies that can replace the paper forms that you're probably using today to collect this external data, uh, replace those t uh, paper forms with an electronic form solution or e-forms solution. Now, it's it's likely that many of the departments across your campus utilize forms, and probably paper forms, um, and, that, and that's very common. And, and we see this uh, very often today. Um, departments like enrollment services where they're collecting admission applications and financial aid applications and, and other student records. Um, we see human resources uh, collecting uh, information from employees, uh, onboarding uh, employees and, and signing them up for benefits. Uh, insurance and and, uh, and time off requests. We see uh, financial services with purchasing requests and expense reports, and facilities, uh, you know, collecting repair requests or working with contracts. Uh, and the list goes on uh, across the uh, across the campus. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the Association for Information and Image Management, or AIM, uh, is one of my favorite. Favorite organizations. Uh, they're a nonprofit uh, content management analyst organization. It's been out, been around for many, many years. Uh, they recently published a white paper, actually back in in 2012, where they analyzed the costs associated with processing forms. And in the study, they found that on average, uh, the cost for processing a single page paper form is about four dollars and fifty six cents. But for 20% of the survey respondents, the cost per form could be as high as $10 or more. And the major cost drivers around the paper forms was the rekeying of the form data into the system of record or the line of business application, as well as the filing, the storing, and subsequently searching for these paper records. So, E-forms are, are more than just an electronic representation of your paper form. When a paper form comes in with inaccurate or missing information, it can be a very time-consuming and costly effort to get that information corrected. E-forms provides mechanisms like database lookups and, 
and pick lists and, and even GPS data collection and other really powerful technologies to validate this inbound information at the time of collection. So this ensures accuracy and completeness of all of this form information before it's submitted to you. Now much of the information needed to run your organization is probably locked up in paper somewhere, on possibly somebody's desk or in a storage room. And by using electronic forms, this information can be now delivered instantaneous to your line of business systems and to your employees. And this is going to uh, make for better and faster decision making. And delivering the information to a content management system is going to allow that information to be leveraged by anyone in the organization at any time in the future. With eForms built-in workflow, you can also automate approval processes and the business process itself, as well as the delivery of information back to your system of records. And this eliminates the inefficiencies and errors that are associated with the manual routing of the paper and the rekeying of form information from the paper into your back office application. Providing students, employees, and suppliers with anytime access to electronic forms allows information to flow freely into your organization. And this reduces the need for these folks to show up in person in your administration buildings. Now, when compared with hand-built forms, customers have seen a return on investment in as little as three months. And in some cases, a 20x productivity improvement when switching from paper to an electronic form solution. On the previous slide, I mentioned that one of the advantages of electronic form solution uh, over paper is the ability to obtain and submit these forms at any time. And to make that possible, iLinks eForms supports a broad array of platforms, including uh, almost any mobile device. And, and eForms are available on any Windows device, including tablets. Uh, you can also embed HTML web forms directly into your public website, your internet site, uh, or your self-service portal. E-Forms support iPad and Android tablets, as well as smartphones. Now, some electronic form solutions, like iLinks E-Forms, are capable of serving the whole campus. And this allows you to distribute the cost among multiple departments. And since the software is managed from a central location, uh, deployment and maintenance costs are greatly reduced, including uh, adding new forms into the system and bringing additional departments online. Now, I uh, just very briefly, I wanted to mention some of the, the specific uh, features uh, of the iLinks eForm product. Uh, iLinks eForms allows users to attach supporting documents directly into the form. Um, they can also uh, use the device's built-in camera to take a picture and attach it to the form and even annotate, uh, you know, draw right on that photo. Uh, you can place free form areas on the form to allow you to uh, capture signatures from the users, and they can use a mouse, they can use a stylus if it's like a tablet, or even their finger to sign. And this same technology can be uh, applied to a form to allow them to draw a picture or a diagram, and, and uh, Dave will show that here in just a little bit. Um, you can define sophisticated validation logic just using the built-in point-and-click rules editor in the eForm product, or you can drop into the eForm extension framework and within this environment create any type of validation or integration or custom business logic uh, that you need for that particular form. So to close out this intro section, uh, let's recap just quickly some of the key benefits of using uh, electronic forms. Uh, ensuring that submitted form data is accurate and complete is going to improve the quality of information that's flowing into your campus and reduce the costs associated with generating, processing, and storing of all the paper forms. Creating and deploying new forms is drastically cheaper than creating individual web applications to collect electronic information. Electronically routing live eForms for approvals and automated, automatically delivering this information to your back office systems is a huge cost saver. In higher ed, uh, we tend to have uh, a much higher percentage of mobile device users uh, compared to most corporate communities. And eForms is completely mobile enabled uh, to provide this ubiquitous self-service capability. And the iLinks eForms solution is, is also cloud compatible. So you can, you can choose uh, a deployment model that is, is right for you. 
Uh, and with that, um, I'm going to hand this over to uh, my colleague, uh, Dave McWaters, and he's going to peel the onion back one layer and uh, talk about how uh, you can use electronic forms solutions within a higher ed environment and, and give you some demos. Thanks, Thanks, Randy. As Randy mentioned previously, a strategic electronic forms deployment extends the functionality of your student information system and, and ERP system, as well as your electronic content management system. Uh, further streamlining your business process automation and increasing your overall command and control while reducing your operating costs. We're going to take a look at an example in a few moments, and we're going to be using the iLinks eForms tool uh, as well as iLinks Content Store as the baseline for our demonstration. Um, access to forms can be controlled via user ID, uh, and so uh, as you'll see when we go into our demo, uh, we will be providing a student ID, which will then be linked to the student information system to pull back validation information as in our example will be student first name, last name, uh, some address information, uh, and to facilitate in our example here the actual maintenance of the student record, we're able to push some of those costs of validating out to the consumer or, or the student in this sense and have them actually validate their record prior to passing that record on to us uh, in, the, in the maintenance department. Furthermore, we can enhance this experience by injecting workflow technologies or workflow rules into the overall process. So as an example, uh, in a case where we are collecting a student last name change, we're able to automatically route that change to uh, maybe a first-line supervisor or a support department person to actually approve that change before making the downstream update to the student information system in this example. And we'll show you how that workflow tool works a little bit uh, when we get into our example, but a very powerful uh, way to extend the footprint, again, of your student information system. And finally, once we've collected all this information and validated all this information, we have a record, and we need to record that record. And so in this instance, we want to drop the completed request uh, for that name change or address change into the student's electronic file that's stored on your content system uh, from an auditability standpoint. So let's take a look at what this looks like uh, from a, from a, dem from a uh, demonstration perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and access iLinks eForms, and I'm going to directly access the form itself. There are many different ways you can control access to forms, as Randy mentioned. So students, this could be a student-facing self-service portal or a kiosk. Um, this could be embedded into an existing website. Um, I'm going to access the form, and I'm going to select the student name change form. And so, let me get this, uh, there we go. So up comes the student name change or student information change request form, and I'm going to enter in my student ID. And you can see that I'm linked directly to the student information system, and I'm pulling back student last name, first name, and middle initial. In this form example, we're using the same form to control uh, two different types of updates. There's a, a change of address type information, or they have the ability to do a name change to record if someone is married um, or if there's a legal proceeding that requires a change. And I just wanted to show you that through the use of radio button or other technology, you can actually multi-use forms. We can also embed other forms into this, this form. And we can also, if it's a name change, record the reason why this person is changing their name and request any type of backup information to get associated with this form to complete the record. So if we make a change, uh, a name, or excuse me, an address change for uh, our student here who was William Thurston Howell III, or oh, sorry, Thurston William Howell III, we're going to change uh, his address Oops, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've recorded uh, that I'm changing that, that this student is changing uh, 
uh, their address information. And now I'm going to submit this actual record for process. And you'll notice down below, we're recording the fact that the user and who that user is um, has uh, actually submitted this form and is now waiting for additional processing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, from a student perspective, now close that form. Uh, now I'm going to switch hats and, and going to jump into the system as a manager. And as you can see here, I have a work order, or excuse me, a change request in the manager queue. If I select that request and go take a look at it, uh, this would be the downstream workflow tool that has actually hit the system. And so um, Thurston Howell has actually submitted this form. And now Dave McWaters is in as the manager of your university. And I'm reviewing this change. Again, this doesn't have to happen. This is just from uh, our fictitious business process. We want to review the change. Once I've reviewed that change, as a manager, I can approve that change uh, or reject it. And now I've completed my work. So this record is complete. From a business process perspective, the next piece of work, next piece that occurs, or next business task that occurs, is that record actually goes into the content repository. We are now looking at iLink's content store, and if I select this record, you can see that uh, the content uh, from eForms has dropped into the student's electronic record uh, that's stored in the ECM application, and here is the actual form. Uh, it's stored as a PDF in this case and recorded uh, for our ability and recreation standpoint. So we have a, a fully automated process from uh, a student name change request. Now back over here. Next, I'd like to uh, let's take a look at a different use case. Um, and it provides uh, benefits to the internal campus departments through the use of portable devices. Um, so as Randy had mentioned, uh, again, a, another tangible benefit of, the e -form, of an e-form solution is the ability to extend out to mobile devices. Um, often work orders and supporting documentation, things, items such as quotes and, and pictures, uh, if stored electronically, are typically scanned post-process, meaning that after the work has been completed, all the work products are collected up by um, maybe multiple organizations uh, and either stored in file cabinets or scanned after the fact and business systems are updated. Um, this obviously leads to potential for errors, um, also disjointed records and the inability to actually locate uh, and associate records with downstream processes such as purchase orders or any other types of information that come out from business systems. In an example that we're about to look at, a work order request has been submitted to the campus facilities department. Typically, a facilities engineer is dispatched to estimate the work order requests received from the campus user. In this example, we're going to use the e-form to extend that quote request out to the field estimate mm -hmm. through a mobile device. Uh, and, and do some validation and information collecting and with the end all result being that we're actually going to create a quote and send it back to the requesting organization for approval. So let's take a look at what that will look like. So I'm going to access eForms again, and this time I'm going to access the quote sheet. And here you can see different different form, uh, and here we're keying off a customer number. This could be a department ID. Uh, I'm not using a tablet device. I'm using my desktop, so uh, I wasn't uh, an arts, uh, you know, I didn't receive a bachelor of arts degree here, so I'm going uh, to have to excuse me when it gets down to the repair diagram notes in the drawing here. I'll be using my mouse, and I'm uh, not that creative, sorry to say. Whoops. There we go. Sorry. So, keying in a customer number or a work order number here, and again, through a link to the ERP system, pulling back. Uh, specific contact information or information that's particular to this work order. And now the ability, again, through a mobile device, think of me as the person uh, taking a look at, in this case, where we have a damaged coil. And I have the ability then, if I were using a camera, to actually take a photo of the repaired part. I don't have a camera, so I'm just going to go ahead and import a picture in and associate it with 
this particular work order. So now this picture, this photo, actually becomes a part of the of the record for this this uh, this quote. And then I have the ability to actually, as Randy was suggesting or, or discussing, I have the ability to create notes, uh, make drawings. Uh, again, this is where creativity comes into play, and not my strong suit. Sorry, guys. Uh, but again, here able to actually. Uh, make drawings or renderings uh, particular uh, to this work order. Uh, again, the ability to record email addresses. And from this quote, from the quote perspective here now, uh, once I have collected information, I have the ability to email the quote uh, or kick off a workflow process uh, back to the dispatch area that says go ahead and schedule the work. I also have the ability below here to actually perform signatures uh, to record signatures just to give you a feel for how these, uh, and again, if you're using a stylus, uh, this would obviously be much easier, but the ability to actually record this information um, on the actual form itself. You see the blue bar to the right that signifies that there is a second page. I can, as Randy had mentioned previous to this, I can have multiple pages associated with this particular document. And here's a field where I can actually make recordings, so I can actually record uh, and, pro and provide a sound recording uh, while I'm on site. And again, this would be stored as part of the permanent record that, that gets stored into your content application. Uh, one additional piece of information here is you can see at the top of the screen and also at the bottom of the screen, you see the green bar. Hopefully you can see that uh, on your monitors. Um, so any business process or, or form processing rules that we have built in or scripted into this actual form, um, as we traverse through the form, if we, uh, if when the bars are green, we have passed all of the form edits. Uh, whenever we have failed a form edit for any reason, uh, the actual bars will turn red, giving you a visual, a visual, visual cue that uh, there is an issue with uh, completing the form. So nice, uh, nice heads up type capability there. Once I've completed, I actually finish the form, and that's it. Uh, from a, a work order perspective now, again, based on your business process, this could uh, create, uh, in one of our use cases, we have uh, an email going back to the requesting department, basically saying that uh, at a high-level quotation perspective, you're looking at X dollars from, a, from a, a quotation perspective, do you want to proceed? Uh, from a work or, from a workflow perspective, that department can then approve or reject that work request before we actually get into going out and, and, and driving the quotation, the purchase order process, and having that process be um, discontinued later. It's a, it's a form of savings. Again, same as in the previous process uh, with the student ID form, we are actually uh, once we capture that information, we are storing that information directly into the content management system and providing, again, a seamless, uh, the ability to create a seamless electronic file for the purchase order, the work order, the quotes, any of the backup information from an audibility perspective. From there, I'd like to turn it back over to Randy. Uh, again, excuse me, again, these are just uh, two examples of the benefits that can be realized by extending eForms into the campus uh, enterprise content management ecosystem. eForms is truly the next step in strategically leveraging ECM infrastructure. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Randy to discuss enterprise integration. All right. Well, thanks, thanks Dave. Um, I, I thought those were great demos. Definitely highlighted some of the things we've talked about, about uh, tying that that uh, uh, form experience at the point of, of form filling with the back office system, the line of business system to pull information, validate information, speed the collection of that, that data that's coming into the system, the workflows. So that was great. Um, I, I talked earlier too about once this information has made its way into the organization, into the workflow, and been released to the line of business application, um, you know, it's, it's going to help users within your organization make better decisions more quickly. Um, you, you have the chance to unlock the value of this data, uh, which previously had been locked up in paper forms, and you make this information readily available uh, to anyone in the organization. 
So Image Source has technologies to manage the submitted form data and deliver that data in a very meaningful, contextual way uh, right to your line of business users' desktops. And they can do this with a single button click and without having to leave their line of business application. Uh, and this type of integration, believe it or not, requires no custom coding. This technology integrates seamlessly with, with virtually any type of student information system or ERP system or line of business application, whether that's a web-based product or a desktop application. So you want to deliver scanned transcripts to your PeopleSoft campus solution users without modifying a single bit of PeopleSoft or you want your banner or now Aleutian users to have immediate access to signed student loan applications without a month-long IT project. Well, ImageSource has technologies that can, can help and do these things. In fact, uh, ImageSource Enterprise Content Management Solutions support a wide range of enterprise capabilities. And so I just want to break it down real quick into three main components. On the left here, uh, we see eForms and Capture, which are technologies that efficiently bring in all forms of content into your organization and, and really through any type of, of onboarding channel. In the center, we have the lifeblood of the organization. This is the workflow capabilities. And this is the technology that turns the traditional shuffling of paper and emails and faxes into a repeatable, auditable, in, intelligent electronic flow of content throughout your organization. And finally, on the right, we've got the repository and, I, as I just talked about, the content enablement, which provides a sec secure but very easy uh, way to access content from anywhere in your organization. It also provides long-term archival and final destruction of that uh, if you have that in a record retention plan. So that's it. So let's open it up uh, for some questions now. Kim, if you, if you have some questions that came in. Yep, um, yep, we had a couple of questions that come in. Uh, let me get to the first one here. Um, so it says, are we currently, are we are currently using Oracle IPM? How difficult would it be to integrate eForms uh, from another vendor? Uh, that's a great question. And eForms and the rest of the IPM products uh, are, are designed to work very, very well with other products and technologies. And so the ability to take an eForm and uh, you know, use that use the workflow and release that information into, let's say, iLinks Content Store for for certain uh, Oracle Web Center, uh, EMC App Extender, SharePoint, IBM FileNet. Uh, these are all out of the box connectors um, that can push that information directly into those systems. Um, as well, uh, eForms provides the ability to generate uh, a very industry standard set of artifacts um, where you've got a document and then you've got an index file that, that points to the document and provides you know, some type of delimited metadata set. And uh, you know, virtually all of the content management systems, a lot of the workflow systems can pick up a file like that and, uh, and archive that or, or deliver it into the workflow. So the answer is it's very easy to get eForms integrated into your current environment and leverage your existing uh, uh, investments in um, you know, enterprise applications. Okay, the, we've got a couple more here. How would a solution like this compare to using a PDF form? Well, uh, so PDF forms are, are kind of the de facto standard. They're, they're extremely easy to create. You can put them on your website very easily. Um, and they actually do have some, some ties into back-end systems with the, the Adobe Form Server. Uh, but really what we find is, is that the, the eForms environment, uh, iLinks eForms environment, is, is much more robust in doing the things that we talked about uh, that are very important from a form collection perspective, and that is integrating your system of records into that form-filling experience to validate that information, ensure its completeness and accuracy, and then get that delivered on through a built-in workflow to the line of business system. Um, and I, I just briefly mentioned some of the technologies, uh, such as database lookups, uh, ability to pull GPS information, to generate barcodes, uh, to do uh, address uh, lookups on the web, uh, and uh, you know, call custom web services. There's just a tremendous amount of capabilities baked into the iLinks eForms platform that you're not going to find uh, with Adobe PDF. Um, and you know, that's that's 
fine, it's a great product, but if you're really looking to eliminate this rekeying of information and uh, speed the delivery of accurate information into your organization, then uh, iLink C form I think is going to provide a more robust uh, environment to do that. Thanks, Randy. Um, is it difficult to embed these forms into um, an existing website? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that one because we just we were just uh, doing this. Uh, no, and the, the answer is no. It's it's quite easy. Um, in fact, uh, to uh, take a web form, the uh, the web version of the form, and uh, get that to pop up inside your your public website or or your in, your intranet site or or your uh, your self service portal, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, you can do this in a couple of ways. If it's a an, an intranet site. Uh, or a, uh, a portal, a self-service portal, you can have the users authenticate uh, directly into the eForms product. Uh, or if it's a public website, then that can be all done anonymously and that information collected and submitted uh, without any type of, of authentication at all. So yeah, it's, it's, it's flexible. Uh, you've got multiple ways to do it, and it's, it's quite easy to get those forms plugged in. Thanks again, Randy. So um, just to keep that within our time frame, uh, this concludes our final chapter of our higher ed webinar series. If you have any additional questions that we weren't able to get to today, uh, or if you'd like to provide input on some topics that you'd like to see covered in any of our upcoming webinars, again, please reach out to us um, to our website at imresourcing.com um, by using any of our social sites or you can um, always contact Dave or Randy directly by the email that was up there on the screen. We'll be posting a copy of this webinar to the ImageSource website and we'll send out a direct link to the recording in the follow-up email that you receive. Also keep an eye out for any future emails regarding our upcoming events. And thanks again for joining us today. Have a great day. Thanks guys for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.